Veronica is the last presentation before the break. Uh, so be nice with her. Um, uh, as you see from the title, uh, the presentation might raise a number of questions. Uh, so uh, think about it. And uh, when you do uh, ask questions later, uh, make them short and, and, and quick so Veronica can have time to, uh, to answer all of them. Veronica, you have the floor. Thank okay, you. Thank you. I uh, hope you can hear me. I'm not sure. Um, yeah. Le son c'est bon. Okay. Uh, okay. So my name is Veronica. I work for the Cognitive Threat Analytics team in Cisco Czech Republic, and um, I'm going to talk about an analysis of network traffic that um, of a malware that we run in our lab, and that in that in it end up in a brute forcing attack. Uh, so. If you have questions, you can ask them later, or feel free to uh, ping me later. So, okay. So, as many of you, I work uh, studying and analyzing uh, network traffic from malware, mostly from different sources. Usually, these sources are, uh, are very small, uh, like blogs, Twitter, trackers, every source of intelligence that um, many of you help to create. But um, so. These are usually small sources, and then I can apply to uh, detect and identify threats in like large uh, amount of data, like real traffic, in inside our, our company and customers and so on. But most of these um, sources of data <coughs> are from malware that ha has been run for mostly from one to five minutes. That's the usual sandboxing time, for example, and my, most of the blogs and reports. Some, sometimes cover this time, maybe more, 10 minutes, uh, top maybe ha one hour. But usually um, there is no more intelligence, more than one hour, maybe some hours, but not so much. So the question is like, what happened next? What the malware does after one hour of infection? What the malware does after one week of infection? What the malware does uh, when it has been running for a month? Is something changed? Is it's like worth to run malware more time or not? Maybe, maybe it's not. Maybe in just five minutes we have everything we need, right? So um, uh, I was curious about the about this, so I want to try it. So I ran this malware in our lab. It's the um, sandbox environment is uh, very basic. It's not nothing from uh, nothing complex. It runs virtual box. Um, I don't have any. Uh, anti-virtualization tricks, it's just normal VM. Um, they actually, uh, the malware is a Gamma Ru Andromeda uh, malware. Uh, it was, categorization is hard, we base uh, our judgment on um, some virus total uh, results and also from the traffic and also Jose is going to talk about tomorrow about Gamma Ru Andromeda as well, so he also double checked this. Um, so we took this malware, ran it in our lab, and we let it run for a month. And this is how the uh, malware, uh, the infection scenario looks like. So the infection started on, on May 12th, and we let it run until uh, June 12th. And you can see where the infection started. And uh, the first uh, 10 days, the Bonnet was alive, the command and control was, um, was active, uh, there was some communication, but there was no instruction from the bot master, or the, bonnet. the bot actually was kind of evil, we call it. Um, so there was nothing happening. Uh, but from, from the bot master point of view, this is a waste of money because you have some machine infecting, even if it's in a sandboxing environment, it, it's kind of not giving any profit. So um, uh, after some time, it seems that something happened, uh, that the behavior changed. The bot was instructed to start downloading new payloads. Um, it attempted, we, we are going to see later how many it tried to download, and then the, some of them worked. And we can see that at some point it triggered another infection. And from that moment on, there were, the bot was infected like twice. And uh, we have like two command and controls communicating at the same time. And that new behavior was the brute forcing that I'm going to cover later. 
but if you can see the graph, uh, the, the brute forcing behavior lasted only four days, and after that, the primary command and control was uh, ins uh, was instructing the bot to start downloading new payloads to change the behavior again. But uh, it seems that I don't know something happened. That there wasn't nothing interesting in the last uh, end of the capture. So this is how the uh, traffic looks like from the Camaru um, command and control. Uh, it's a simple HTTP uh, request, post request. You can see there that there is encrypted traffic being sent and received. Uh, I didn't reverse the binary, so I'm just focusing on network traffic. So um, uh, because I, I, from the network perspective, I cannot do anything about this, so I calculated some statistics, uh, characteristics about the traffic. So. Um, uh, I, I took some values about the amount of bytes sent without headers. It's like the pure data transmitted over time uh, in a daily basis. And you can see that the bot contacted actually three different servers, but only one was active, and that's the red one that was alive during the, the 30 days. But there was no difference with the, with the other two. The amount of data sent uh, by the bot, it was uh, very stable along the the infection. It wasn't the same with the received bytes. Um, we can see here that in red there is the the active command control and the amount of bytes was very small. Uh, on the contrary, the blue one, uh, the server was responding, uh, but it actually it was an error code and it seems like a uh, not crafted error code. It was just normal one, and I think that. Probably the server was down. Um, the, and after some days, it stopped trying to contact that server. And in the end of the capture, it tried, the bot tried to attempted to contact another command and control server, but uh, while it was replying, it was replying with zero bytes. So I think it also wasn't very alive. So um, this is the activity of how the uh, gamma Ru command and control was downloading new, instructing the, the bot to download new payloads. And this is very interesting because this is the primary command and control that was leading the infection and was set telling the machine how to behave. And uh, you can see that uh, it was very busy and the most one of the most interesting, the second more, in more interesting part is the one that you can see in the middle that I don't know if you can read the names, but it seems like it's the same file name but version. So maybe somebody was trying new versions of malware and see if they worked or not. But we are going to focus on the fifth one um, because that's the one that triggered the brute forcing activity. So uh, the m this file was downloading, uh, downloaded from this server. Um, it was a HTTP request like this, like very plain, uh, downloading some .exe. Uh, if you're in a network, this is very suspicious. Um, um, you can have the hash here later. Uh, the, the malware was have very simple functionality. It was capable of performing uh, logins to WordPress sites and then communicating with the command and control in, in different ways, informing whether it was successful or not. So from the traffic point of view, um, the command and control communication uh, of this malware was HTTP and there was no encryption, nothing, just plain text. And um, the communication can, can be split in di three different behaviors. The first behavior is where uh, the first request you can see there, um, where the bot was communicating the the status of the of, of the brute forcing. So there are some parameters like what which gate it was used, how many good, bad, unlucky results, and so on. And the second behavior was where the the bot was retrieving the files, uh, txt files containing a list of WordPress sites to, to brute force later. Um, it was also the answer in plain, tes plain text, uh, as we are going to see. And the third one was where a special request that happened in very low volume that uh, the bot used to uh, actually report the successful attempts, especially the successful attempts. So. 
uh, this is uh, an example of uh, uh, report status request uh, and we can see that how this request is linked to the second behavior because in the answer there is a next file that the bot should retrieve um, and this is the file that is retrieved by the bot and you can see there the list of sites that is just a, li a txt file with maximum 1000 sites order alphabetically and sometimes the files contain just 1000 sites co uh, starting with A, sometimes starting with G and so on. Um, here is an example of one of these sites. You can see that it's possible that they are WordPress based. Um, this one is kind of shady. I, I'm, I'm not sure if it's legit, but anyway. Um, and this is where uh, the bot sends the success data. And you can see the request is, is interesting because it's, it's split, so you're not going to see it quite well if in a proxy log, but it's sending the domain that was successful um, as part of the post request. Um, so this is, this is the brute force inactivity uh, overview in the, in the, in the white is the amount of requests per day, HTTP request. And you can see that only the, the four days, the first four days where uh, the brute forcing was active. And the, the red one is where it was how many files were retrieved. And you can see that it's mm, above one, 100 per day, uh, mostly. And there were also some success data requests, which is quite interesting because it seems that it worked, right? So um, the horizontal brute forcing, um, I, I say it's horizontal brute forcing because it's not that the bot was attempt attempting to uh, access a website, uh, trying a thousand different password, user password combinations per uh, each site. It was attempting just one or two combinations per, uh, per site and trying um, many sites at the same time. So um, uh, I, couldn't, I had all the pickup so I could see what user password combinations it, ha it tried. And most than, more than 50% of the cases it tried admin admin. Uh, I guess it was hard coded in the, in the binary because the bot didn't retrieve any password list from anywhere. Um, the other combination was admin and some custom password. And this is interesting because the bot had the functionality uh, to some, somehow craft uh, the domain, the, the possible potential password for that site based on the name of the domain that was attempting to log in. So if you have, for example, google.com, it will try admin Google. And yeah, it worked. Uh, so, in total, there were more than um, 86,000 uh, custom passwords attempted. Um, you can see here some examples. There are some Slavic words that are interesting, um, some Polish uh, cities, and some. Uh, uh, typically, these, these custom passwords are associated with domain names, so it makes sense. Uh, um, Okay, so um, how aggressive it was. So uh, every day it, there were more than 40,000 sites that the bot attempted to log in, and that's a lot. Um, and in total, uh, you can see that it was very aggressive for a, for a very short period of time, and that's it. Um, so it, it, was, it was very interesting to see. And um, so in total, the bot alone, one bot alone tried to uh, log in into more than 150,000 uh, WordPress sites with only 23 success cases. So um, the ratio of successfulness is, is, is also interesting to, to have in mind for this type of automated uh, uh, work that the bot was doing. Um, this is an example of a uh, of a um, website that uh, was actually the bot was able to log in. And you can see that it's a Brazilian blog. Um, there is nothing seemingly wrong with it. 
And if you, I don't know if you can read, but uh, Bayes Total have a report on that IPs with some malicious hits on August. That's a couple of months later since my bot was able to log into this site. So you can you can guess the economic cycle here. Like uh, we have a bot that is just attempting to massively uh, log in into sites, then you can sell them, and then other people install malware, and then you can send a phishing email um, to get u more users infected. Um, I'm not sure about how much uh, access to uh, this type of sites cost, but you can make the count how, how profitable this can be. Um, uh, in just one bot was, in my point of view, it was kind of very successful, uh, getting six new sites for free uh, every day. Uh, if you have like 100 bots, 1,000 bots, that's a lot. And there is a lot of bonnets, like for example, CryptoWall, that when you analyze their command and control traffic, they are all using WordPress hacked sites to communicate with, uh, to host their command and controls momentarily, and then they just move on to another server. So the question of where do, how do they get this type of sites, may, this might be an answer, right? Um, uh, in the end, I did an uh, analysis of how these uh, targeted sites were distributed because I was just worried if this was a targeted attack and so I was part of the source of that attack, so I was kind of uh, concerned. But uh, as you can see, there was no uh, special distribution of, of uh, targets. Uh, the, all the WordPress sites were kind of uh, well distributed among the world and uh, there is of course a high amount of sites in uh, US but that's I guess that's okay um, so there wasn't any special this is not a targeted attack uh, so it's cool um, so uh, my conclusions were that uh, yeah uh, we would we would have never seen this type of malware behavior ever, even the, this type of payload being dropped if we run the malware just one hour, so it's kind of worth, not for all the malware of course, but maybe some samples uh, it is worth. Also, uh, it's important to execute the malware in like re with real internet access, many sandboxing solutions don't do that, and it's not really possible to see what the malware really does if you are emulating it. Um, also, uh, sometimes there are reports saying this uh, malware is just behaving this way, Gamaru is just information stealer. Yeah, we cannot define a bondnet anymore by a single behavior. They can update themselves like very fast. So, um, And uh, all the brute forcing actually worked because we are still having credentials with admin admin, admin uh, Google, admin uh, my site. <laughs> So all the work we are doing in education, I think still is not enough. So we should work more than that. And if you have questions, uh, we have some minutes. So we have some time for a few questions in the middle. Okay. Uh, Introduce yourself, Thibaut. Okay, my name is Thibaut, I work for the Solitaire G, um, with Thomas, you may know him. <laughs> I was asking, uh, um, did you make any statistics about the websites that were attacked by these botnets? Uh, you talk about WordPress, you saw a lot of it? Uh, it was specifically WordPress. Okay. Uh, it seems that the, the, the malware has like some kind of hard-coded the, the way how to create the post request. And okay, so the WP login, uh, the .php, et cetera, et cetera, it was before single. Okay, yeah. okay. Yeah. And uh, any kind of website uh, beyond WordPress, to all purpose, all way, always WordPress without any kind of website. Uh, it can be just a, a blog or something or a corporate website. Uh, uh, yeah, it it wasn't any. Um, yeah, all the all the yeah. targets were um, of people creating WordPress sites, but hosted on their own domains. There okay. wasn't any domain something dot WordPress dot com. It was just, it seems that people buy that kind of sites and they create their own blog or site. Thank you very much.
Yeah. On the right here. Um, when uh, did you analyze the sample? Um, when did you receive it? Uh, Roughly. I, I found the malware around April and I started the infection on May and for, for a month. So okay, yeah, I just found um, like early samples all the way from back to uh, May 5th um, listed on malware.com. So yeah, it was interesting that it was very close. Yeah, well, I didn't submit it there, so maybe somebody else was trying to <laughs> check it out. Yeah. yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah, but thanks. Yeah. Um, Andromeda is a plugin based. Yeah, so it's so modular. So did, did you see the plugin download and did you see anything else or just that? Well, I in this case, I just analyzed this uh, brute forcing one, but uh, you can see how it was downloading different uh, type of files. And uh, uh, Jose is going to talk about plugins tomorrow, but I, um, I believe that many of them might be some updates to the bonnet. But I didn't took a look at the binaries. Other questions? <coughs> One in the middle. Dennis. Hi. Hi. Work or not work? work. Uh, my name is Dennis from IBM. Uh, the question is, uh, malware was running on your system for about a month. Yeah. Yeah, and during this month, you, you or Cisco were contacted by any law enforcement agency, someone to say, you know, you're brute forcing our servers, please stop it. Well, uh, no. <laughs> Thank you. The short <laughs> answer is no. Um, but actually, um, from a detection point of view, uh, it's not that it, it wasn't a vertical brute forcing that someone could notice, right? Because if you, if you, are, um, if you are monitoring the WordPress server, where at least one or 10 WordPress sites were, were hosted, you will see only 10 requests of login. No, at least, you know, at least a local ISP that Cisco connected at the Czech Republic can ask you a question, but it seems no. Mm. Thank you. <laughs> Last question. Hi, I'm Rodelio from Microsoft. Uh, I got two questions. One, so you're kind of related to what you asked. Uh, so we're running the malware in for one month. Is it a supervised or unsupervised running we're in like you know, how, how do you supervise? I'm, I'm thinking of, uh, let's say, Gamaru doing some other payloads, let's say, with the email account that you have in your VM, they might send other malware and stuff. Something malicious activity that you cannot control. How do you, you know, control that? How do you monitor that? Um, I actually, these uh, long-term malware capture experiments were kind of unsupervised. I just infected and try not to even open the machine or use it. So it was it was kind of, uh, let's see, I was of course checking the network traffic to every every day to check that this kind of was under control kind of. Okay. Um, but uh, I only have blocked some spam because I'm not interested in that type of traffic. But the rest it was kind of uh, completely unsupervised. Okay. I got one more. Yeah. Uh, so you're tracking this malware, and are you guys taking note of the server where this successful uh, brute force uh, has reported? Um, I'm thinking of like if you have a list of server where uh, re uh, where the malware report this uh, um, successful attacks. Uh, well, we have the command and control servers, and um, and from for the. Uh, WordPress that were successfully attacked, we are trying to contact them before publishing any more inf yeah. information. Because I think it might be interesting to correlate it to the malware that distributed by uh, WordPress. Mm. You know, yeah. I, I wonder if you could share that report servers. Um, yeah, I think so. We might talk later. Thank you. Mm. Thank you. Um, you're, you're breaking the break? Okay, last question here. Hi. Um, Hi. What is cognitive security research? <laughs> uh, we are uh, 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 very short. We are a group inside Cisco that uh, we work doing um, anomaly detection in network traffic doing machine learning. Thank you. Yeah.